Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're going to be talking about my current setup for the 2019 5K iMac. Now we have the ninth generation Core i9 8 core processor in here, which is super fast. Now, last week we compared this PC versus the iMac Pro baseline configuration, and it was just as fast, if not faster in some cases, for generally half the price. Now, the reason why it was half the price is we didn't get some of the upgrades directly from Apple, including the RAM, the a GPU configuration as well as the internal system storage capacity using the Fusion Drive. And with this current setup, you'll definitely save a lot more money. But if you do want to upgrade some of those factors, there are some options out there. And thus, we want to demonstrate some of those capabilities in this video. Firstly, we want to upgrade the keyboard. I'm not a fan of the ultra low profile keyboard. It's uncomfortable in my opinion. I still want the wireless option. And Corsair just recently came out with the K83 wireless wireless keyboard that you see in front of you. It is fully Bluetooth as well as 2.4 gigahertz compatible. It's ideal for pretty much any kind of wireless application, whether that be on a smart TV, PC, Mac, anything like that. And it's a combination of a fully backlit wireless keyboard as well as a touchpad. As you can see on the right hand side, there's also left right click buttons on the bottom, a joystick and even left right click buttons mounted at the bottom side of the keyboard on the right hand side. So you can basically use this keyboard in kind of a remote control gamepad-esque fashion. It's a very comfortable to type on, especially for a prolonged period of time, sleek in terms of its design and form factor, and 40-hour battery life. So uh, definitely an excellent option uh, if you're using uh, Windows-based PC, Chromecast, or any of those kind of uh, mobile living room style systems, but it also makes a great companion uh, to an iMac like we see over here. Uh, granted, you're going to get some more capabilities with the official Corsair driver support on Windows and by the way, we are going to be running Windows 10 on this iMac for a lot of our gaming needs and a lot of our other applications that don't really run that great on Mac OS 10. So this is definitely an awesome upgrade, especially compared to the standard iMac keyboard. Now, as you can see, we've also mounted a very sleekly integrated USB type C hub. So we have basically a three USB 3.0 connections, a USB type C connection, as well as uh, SD card slots for both micro and full size cards. Now with this hub being mounted on the front side, it's definitely a lot more convenient to get access to those ports and connectivity options at the front, opposed to reaching at the back, which is always kind of cumbersome, especially when you have uh, your iMac all set up on your desk. Now this actually clamps right below the bottom mounted vents and it will occupy one of the Thunderbolt 3 connections on the back. And since we only have two Thunderbolt uh, connections at the back, you will only have access to one, which is uh, definitely a bummer, but uh, could be a, a convenience factor worth uh, looking at, especially if you want a front mounted USB hub on the Mac. Now there's several different companies making these USB hubs for the iMacs, whether that's in the silver or space gray color for the iMac Pros. They generally hover around the $50 mark on Amazon and we'll have links in the description for more details. Now in terms of RAM, if you go with the baseline eight gigabyte configuration that most of these iMacs comes with, they actually come with a two four gigabyte SODIMM slots clocked around 2666 megahertz. Now you can even Easily add 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory to the iMac for around $180, and that's way cheaper than anything from Apple. I think they're charging you about $600 uh, plus to get 32 gigabytes. Versus if you buy the RAM separately, you can still use the two uh, four gigabyte slots, giving you around 40 gigabytes uh, for only about $180 upgrade cost, opposed to paying $600 for only 32 gigabytes on Apple side. The other thing. Thing is when it comes to the storage configuration we went with the one terabyte fusion drive option now if you want the ssd option specifically the pci express one terabyte ssd storage configuration you're going to pay about 700 dollars extra now luckily since we have thunderbolt 3 connectivity we can utilize a breakaway external 
box that uses a PCI Express M.2 drives and converts that into a Thunderbolt 3 connection, thus giving the full bandwidth and capabilities of PCI Express M.2 drives. Uh, the one that we're specifically using is from Western Digital. It's the SN750 one terabyte M.2 SSD. Now we're using the StarTech Thunderbolt 3 PCIe expansion chassis and also you need a PCI Express 2 M.2 adapter which is only around 14 bucks and the total cost for the specific setup is around $484. That's a lot better than $700 from Apple and you're getting a similar a sequential read and write performance essentially double of what the Fusion Drive can do. Now the Fusion Drive essentially by itself is perfectly reasonable and fine for most applications out there but if you do want a little bit more flexibility and SSD PCI grade uh, performance this is definitely an awesome option and gives you tons of flexibility down the road for using different capacity M.2 drives as well as other PCI Express devices that are supported by the operating system whether that's OS 10 or Windows. Now in terms of the GPU configuration, we have the 575X uh, in this 5K iMac, which is pretty darn fast for most of the things that we're going to do. But if you are interested in uh, grabbing an eGPU solution, uh, specifically if you have a, a less powerful graphics card built into your Mac, uh, I think probably the best bang for the dollar option right now is the Gigabyte Gaming Box equipped with the RX 580. The RX 580 is in a huge upgrade. From the 575X, we basically got around 10 more average frames per second on our Unigen's Valley benchmark. But since I got this box used on Amazon for only $372, it definitely is a nice upgrade from the stock graphics card in the specific iMac. And more importantly, I can use this on my Mac Mini on the MacBook Air, which definitely have some very weak graphics processing abilities, and this will give it a nice boost. Now, there's a, a couple of other eGPU options that we've tested in the past, including Blackmagic's Vega 56 uh, offering, which is uh, dramatically overpriced in my opinion. If you do want better performance and the flexibility to add whatever graphics card you want, there's a couple of different companies out there offering some solutions, but I think the best deal is from Sonnet. They sell a eGFX breakaway box equipped with Thunderbolt 3, a 350 watt or 500 watt uh, power supply. So you can pretty much fit any kind of Vega 6456 graphics card in there, as well as any graphics card from NVIDIA. If you are using the new RTX 2000 series of GPUs from NVIDIA, you're pretty much going to be stuck to mostly Windows-based applications since Mac OS X official support is lacking at the moment. Now, lastly, I want to add some sort of better speakers to this setup because the ones on the iMac are not that great. And I've been recently testing out the Logitech Z606 5.1 surround sound sound setup. You can also use this in a 2.1 configuration. Now what's great about this Logitech system is that it's using Bluetooth to connect to your particular device that you're streaming audio from and that's awesome in the fact that you don't have to wire a manual cable to your PC and plus the iMac doesn't have a lot of connectivity options to begin with. Now you still have to hardwire each individual speaker respectively but luckily you don't have to use this in a 5.1 setup if you don't want to or have the space to. You can use this system in a 2.1 configuration and the sound quality itself is nothing to write home about it's not going to really impress you in any matter in fact the uh, mid-range and uh, top ends were severely lacking from the satellite speakers luckily if you're a bass lover like myself you have a very powerful 5.25 inch driver inside the woofer and it registers uh, low frequencies uh, very dynamically and definitely gives you a lot more oomph than anything built into the iMac Mac speakers. Now, certainly one big redeeming factor of the setup is the price point. It only costs around a hundred and something dollars, which is definitely affordable and an excellent alternative to using the stock speaker configurations on the 5K iMac themselves. But besides those matters, that's really it for this video. Hopefully you have some sort of idea in terms of what kind of upgrades you can make to your iMac themselves to make it a lot more personal for your specific needs and preferences. And certainly you can save a lot more money uh, going down the route of upgrading the iMac yourself opposed to paying Apple to do it for you. If you have any specific questions, let me know. Give us a thumbs up. If you like this video and make sure you have post notifications turned on. That way you get our videos once they become available. And thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. Check out the links in the description for more details about everything we talked about. And we'll see you real soon. Take care.